over 3,000 treasures were placed in the tomb to help Tutankhamun in his afterlife, and the walls of the burial chamber were painted with scenes of his voyage to the afterworld. The chamber contained four gilded shrines, inside which was a red quartzite sarcophagus containing three nesting coffins. Tutankhamun's mummy rested in the innermost coffin, which is made of solid gold and weighs approximately 110.4 kilos, 242.9 pounds. His body was wrapped in linen and over his face was placed an exquisite gold mask, Tutankhamun winged scarab pendant. This golden pendant of cloisonné technique is inlaid with semi-precious stones and colored glass. The central element of the composition is a winged scarab of chalcedony, grasping on one side a lotus and on the other a papyrus flower, flanked by two uriae, or cobras. A gold frame outlines the main composition and supports pendants of lotus flowers, the bracelet of Tutankhamun with scarab. This rigid gold bracelet is composed of two semicircles joined together by a hinge on one side and a clasp on the other. The central plaque bears a cloisonné scarab inlaid with lapis lazuli. The scarab symbol of the morning sun, was the most popular motif used in jewelry. The bracelet itself is also inlaid with carnelian, lapis lazuli, and colored glass Tutankhamun pectoral with a throne name. This is a masterpiece of jewel from the collection of Tutankhamun. It is a pectoral decorated in a complex way. The central part of the pectoral, which represents the name of the king, consists, in the middle, of a large lapis lazuli scarab. Below it is the hieroglyphic sign Neb, which resembles a basket inlaid with blue glass, above this are the solar and lunar disks made of electrum. The outer edges of the pectoral are decorated with two cobras that appear to be too large in comparison to the Ankh signs, and the eyes of Horus, which are depicted very tightly under the name of the king. The central scarab is provided with the wings of a falcon. At the bottom of the pectoral is a frieze of lotus flowers interspersed with cornflowers and roundels, all inlaid with lapis lazuli carnelian, and colored glass, the gold mask of King Tutankhamun. It was placed directly on the head of the mummy, together with other decorations or trappings such as a golden vertical line of inscriptions and four horizontal ones and the golden figure of the Ba bird which was placed on the chest of the mummy, with a big scarab amulet, the heart amulet, inscribed on the other side with chapter 30b of the Book of the Dead in order to protect the heart of the deceased. The mask itself is made out of pure gold about 10.23 kilograms representing the facial features of the king. Tutankhamun is wearing the Nim's headdress, which is striped blue and gold as a sign of association with God Ra. Ra's body was believed to be made out of gold and his hair out of lapis lazuli. Middle dot the king is represented with a broad collar, sk, inlaid with semi-precious stone like lapis lazuli, dark blue, and carnelian, red, turquoise, light blue and on either sides of the broad collar there is a representation of the falcon god, Horus, Tutankhamun crook and flail. These emblems were found separately in the hall the crook and flail in the treasury. The beam is historically the most interesting because it deals with the gold cap at the base of the handle name of the king in its early form Tutankhachin with his throne name Nebki Perura, showing that he had belonged to him then that he was still a child, but after he had ascended the throne. Since a plague was one of the symbols held by the kings of Egypt in some of their coronation ceremonies, there is at least possible that this object was used by the real scourge Tutankhaten in his coronation at Amarna, when he was about nine years before he was crowned at Karnak. The scammer is listed on both terminals with the caps the throne name only, a difference that, in spite of equal size of two objects, may indicate that they were not originally made as a pair. Tutankhamun's Guardian Statues one of the most striking objects in the exhibition Tutankhamun, Treasures of the Golden Pharaoh, which recently opened to sell out crowds at the Saatchi Gallery in London, is a life-sized striding statue of the king. One of a pair, its mate remains in Cairo. In many ways these statues exemplify many of our misapprehensions about ancient Egypt in general and Tutankhamun in particular. In dramatic black and gold, the statues were said to be really life-size because they represented the pharaoh at the same height as discoverer Howard Carter claimed the boy king had been in life after measuring his mummified body. Why was Tutankhamun famous? Because his tomb is the only tomb of a pharaoh discovered in the Valley of the Kings that had not been robbed. All of the treasures buried with the king were still there. Most pharaonic tombs had been looted over the centuries, so only the tomb itself and none of its actual contents remained. Not Tutankhamun though. His tomb was crammed full of wonderful things in Howard Carter's own words. As a matter of fact, Tutankhamun renown in the modern world is somewhat ironic, given that during his reign he actually accomplished fairly little of note. Today, 
He is, along with Cleopatra and possibly Ramses the Great, among the only Egyptian kings that most ordinary people can name. It is unlikely, however, that most ordinary people living in ancient Egypt some time after Tutankhamun's death would be able to recall him, or at least name any of his achievements, which were few. Given that he was a child for most of his reign and died at 19, with the proceedings of the royal court likely being overseen by the vizier, Tutankhamun was probably regarded as a footnote in history, insofar as a monarch viewed as a living god could be considered inconsequential. It seems that even soon after his death, the Egyptians didn't waste too much time mourning, despite the riches interned within, the tomb of Tutankhamun is uncharacteristically small for king and the priceless treasures buried with the pharaoh were literally stacked unceremoniously on top of each other to maximize space, rather like one would cram bicycles into the back of car.